My name's DJ, would you stand with us? We're gonna worship our God to this morning. His mercies are new and his love endures forever. God, we worship you, we love you, we sing. Come on and put your hands together this morning. Goodbye yesterday, I'm living in the light of a new day. I won't waste another minute in my old ways. Praise the Lord, I've been born again. Goodbye yesterday, I'm living in the light of a new day. I won't waste another minute in my old ways. Praise the Lord, I've been born again. been born again Again and again and again and again You rescued me out of the mess I was in You traded my sorrow for something to sing Now I'm dancing on the grave that I once lived in and Goodbye yesterday I'm living in the light of a new day I won't waste another minute in my old ways Praise the Lord, I've been born again. Goodbye yesterday, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. I've got resurrection in my veins. Praise the Lord, I've been born again, again, and again, and again. You rescued me out of the mess I was in. You traded my sorrow for something to sing. Now I'm dancing on the grave that I once lived in. Again and again and again and again You rescued me out of the mess I was in You traded my sorrow for something to sing Now I'm dancing on the grave that I once lived in I have decided to follow Jesus The world behind the cross before And I will turn So high school, how are you guys doing to rise this morning? Let's continue to worship. We sing. I won't forget the wonder of how you brought deliverance, the exodus of my heart. You found me, because you found me, and you freed me. You held back the waters from my release. Oh, Yahweh. Come, we sing to the God. You're the God who fights for me, Lord of every victory, hallelujah, hallelujah. You have torn, cause 
this morning because I know that there are some people who are standing on the other side of an ocean 
where God has parted away and you're, you're standing on the other side and you're saying, God, man, you have been so faithful. You've been so good. You have been so, so faithful. And there are people on the other side in this room who are looking at an ocean with no way through, with no hope, no end in sight. And when you lift your voice, standing on the other side saying, this is who God is. This is what he's done. It builds faith. That's why we worship together is because there are people here who say, no, 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 I've seen it so I can sing it in faith. And then there's other people in here who say, you know what, if he's singing it or she's singing it, then I better be able to believe that too. Because look, if it's not true, one, why would they sing that loud and that badly? But two, why, how can we sing like that if our God is not so faithful like that? And so let's lift this up one more time. And would you just, I just ask you to just lean into the faith of your brothers and your sisters in the room. That's why we're in church. That's why we're in community. It's to lean on each other and to ride on each other's faith, to stand in each other's strength, to hold each other up, our brothers and our sisters. God, we, we love you, we worship you, and we sing to you because you're faithful and who you were is who you are and it's who you will always be. So we sing this right now that you are the God who fights for me. Sing you're the God who fights for me, Lord of That you're the God who fights for me, Lord of every victory, hallelujah, hallelujah. You're torn, and you have torn apart the sea, you have led me through the deep, hallelujah,
to worship alongside of you. Am I right? Yes, God is so good. Go ahead and say hi to a neighbor while you take a seat. Mark. Hi. If this is your first Sunday here or maybe one of your first Sundays, Welcome! We are so pumped that you found your way here to the church at Rancho Bernardo. Do us a favor, after service, make sure you stop by the Go First Center in the lobby. That is the place that you can get any questions answered, or if you want more information or to get plugged in, you can do it there. I'll be there, so just come and say hi. Okay. <laughs> and if you've been hanging around church here for a while, you are familiar with something that we call Good Neighbor Day. Okay, some of us are familiar. Yesterday, we hosted Good Neighbor Day right here, where nearly 200 of you showed up to put God's love into tangible action. And it was like 75 of those were kids, and it was like one-year-olds all the way to high schoolers, and everyone was, oh, I'm coming from the soccer field. I'm going to the soccer field. I'm literally practicing while I'm assembling kits. So it was great. <laughs> and we had an absolute blast. It was a fantastic way to spend our Saturday together. If you missed out, I'm really sorry because like I said, it was awesome. But, but there's always more friends. In two weeks, we'll be in the lobby signing people up for tons of volunteer opportunities over the course of what we call Serve Week. Are you excited for that? Yes, thank you. We are super pumped. So in two weeks, see us in the lobby for that. And something we did at Good Neighbor Day yesterday, and we'll continue to do at Serve Week and beyond, is we got to write thousands, I'm not kidding, thousands of handwritten notes of encouragement and support and of God's love to put in everything that we're giving away this week. I mean, my hand's a little cramped still, but we did it. We did it, right? And one of the coolest things that happened is that someone at Good Neighbor Day yesterday came up to me and said, Kyle, do you know how important those notes are? And I'm like, I know, they're so great. And I go out and I do my thing. And she's like, no, no, no. Several weeks ago, I was sitting in church and I sat next to someone who was here because they received a handwritten note from this church inviting them into the love of God right here at the church at Rancho Bernardo. Yes. And what's more, that person told her that she had been inviting both her family and her friends to do exactly the same. So little things, they matter. It is incredible to see the amount of influence our lives can have on those around us that need it the most. And you just never know where God needs to show up through you in a handwritten note. Can I get an amen? 
Amen. So if that's something that you want to continue hearing that's happening at this church, you can participate today financially. You can step out in financial faith to ensure that these God stories continue to take place across our community. And you can give to the church in three ways. One, you can go to crb.gives. Two, you can tap that fun little sticker on your armrest. That's what it's for. It's pretty cool. Tap it. And three, you can give cash or checks into the giving boxes, the gray boxes in the back. Thank you, and may God bless you abundantly as you choose to give to his church. Next up, we've got Pastor Josh joining us to conclude our series called Under the... Yes, we're paying attention. Incredible. But first, check out the screens. I've watched for weeks Jared have to follow that bumper, and it's like, doesn't it just like so intense? Happy Sunday! You all excited to be in the house of the Lord? Good, good. I am uh, beyond thrilled uh, to share this Sunday with you. I'm glad that you're here. Uh, God's glad that you're here. You're glad that you're here. It's going to be a great day in the house of the Lord. Amen? A uh, couple things to talk about. One, we had a goal of 300. We got to 334 people that signed up to be in circles of influence. Uh, we're believing that God is going to do really, really cool things in your life uh, and in the lives of others. And, and DJ said to me um, a couple weeks ago, he's like, hey, we're going to pass the goal we had. So we're kind of like, we don't have to talk about community again. Why don't you talk about outreach and evangelism? Because who doesn't want to hear that? Amen. Yeah, so get ready, because we're going to get after it this morning. You guys ready to get after it? Ready to grow in your faith today? All right, so this is going to be a family talk. We're going to get after it a little bit. So anything that I say that is not like our loving Southern pastor, just give me some grace, because we're going to get after it today and have a little family talk. Sound okay? All right, that sounds like it. All right, here we go. So I love me. How many of you like meeting new people? Right? I, I, I was with a friend last night, and, and my wife and I were having dinner with her, and she goes, aren't you just curious about everyone in, 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 in their own way? And I, she's like, don't you just wish there was like a bubble on everybody's head of like, this is who I am, this is what I do, this is how much money I make, this is my, are you ever wondering about that? Like, what does that person do? What how much money they make? What what their credit score is? Wonder where they live. Wouldn't it just be fun to know everyone's story that they're kind of masquerading all around and wondering how true it is? She said that at dinner last night. And I was like, that's super awkward and invasive. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> no, of course we all do. We love meeting people. When my son first um, went to his new elementary school, I was talking to this guy and being super inquisitive. And by the end of the time, he's like, do you want a job? And I was like, no, I just, I, I like getting to know people's stories. And the cool thing about being inquisitive to other people is oftentimes they're inquisitive back. What do you do? They tell, do you like it? Why do you do it? How long have you been doing it? How long does it take to, to accrue vacation hours? I mean, whatever you talk about. And then they say, well, what do you do? They go, well, I do all, you know, all sorts of things. I run a software company and an executive social club. I do some consulting. I preach. And I, Wait, what? You do what? Yeah, yeah, I do this. this I preach. And they go, what's well, this preach? You preach. Yeah, I preach. Like once a month, they... This church is very kind. They let me get up there and everybody sends our pastor emails after I get done and he's got to unwind it all and it's, it's great. And they go, it's, it's interesting. I, they're so inquisitive about this preaching thing, but what I found is they're not so interested in the preaching is they're actually very interested about the who I'm preaching about. They're actually like, well, Tell me more. They don't ask me about like where, how I put a sermon together and what kind of speaking tips I've got. They're like, tell me more about what you're preaching about. You know, the, uh, the, the Barner Group came out recently and, and said that 74% of adults in the United States are curious and they have a deep desire to grow their faith. Three out of four people that you interact with every day 
have a deep desire to grow in their faith. Now, it doesn't say get to know the God of the Bible or the Jesus that died on the cross, but there's something in them that's going, I want to grow my spiritual life. Why is that? Man, we know that, right? Because we're made in the image of God. Because in our very image is the image of God, and so we long to be connected to the higher power that made us. 74% of people are deeply desiring this conversation. Yet we've been programmed that if we try to have this conversation with somebody, it's going to end in conflict and awkwardness and annoyance. And here's the truth. I want to tell you this today. The only way that that's true is if, in fact, you are an awkward, annoying person. Anybody? If you're looking to fight or you're looking for conflict or you're looking to be right, this is a very difficult conversation to have. But if you're looking to have a conversation about the God of the universe, it turns out that three in four people are super curious and deeply desire to get to know God more. I want to do something today. I want to talk about this, this notion of sharing our faith. And, and again, this is going to be a little bit of a family talk. And so if you're new here uh, and, and you're far from God, I want to do my best to introduce the God of the Bible to you today. And if you're here today and, and, and you know God and you walk with Jesus and, and, and maybe you want to brush up a little bit on why the heck we're here, we're going to talk about that today. I want to start by telling you a couple stories that have happened to me over the last 45 days. And I think these stories are important because it kind of sets up where we're going. A few weeks ago, I was at a, um, with, w around a table with a group of guys. And, and it was a really neat environment we were in. And one of the guys sitting right here was like this kind of world-renowned throat surgeon. And he kind of started talking a little bit about a lot of the different um, research and, and innovations that they're doing. And this guy sitting right here um, was, was this really interesting dude in town that takes life science companies public kind of a cool gig, does that. Uh, this guy over here was a partner at one of the top accounting firms, so he was boring. And then there was me. <laughs> and so the four of us are sitting here talking, and, and everyone's kind of talking about what they do. And then it gets to me, and I'm like, well, I run some software companies, I do social club, I do some, and I preach. You preach. Yeah, I preach in this church, and once a month I get to do it, and our pastor has to unwind, and I tell them the whole story. And this guy looks at me, sits right across from me, and uh, he's very more money he could ever spend in his lifetime, very successful guy. And he goes, can I ask you a question? He goes, yeah. He goes, don't you think church is for weak people? Punched him in his throat right then and there. <laughs> he goes, don't you think church is kind of for weak people and people that like need a dependency and, and maybe you're trying to check out on life? Have you ever, can I just ask you that question? By the way, I love, I love talking about God and people speak in their honest truth. Isn't that kind of fun? Because the only, the only thing, how many of you know you get nowhere in life by being easily offended? <laughs> like, have you ever met somebody that's easily offended and radically advancing in their life? It doesn't work. So this guy goes, don't you think church is for weak people? And I, I read, this guy's brilliant. I love the guy. And I, he goes, you know, dependent. They're kind of checking out. And I go, I don't know. We'll call him Jim. I, I don't know, Jim. I mean, thinking about dependencies and checking out, I mean, it kind of reminds me of like that third or fourth drink you've already had. I mean, that's kind of like checking out and being dependent. And, and, and kind of checking out is like, we're at this beautiful club and we golf in. It's kind of checking out. I go, I, I kind of think tr drinking's for weak people. I kind of think golf's for weak people. I kind of think church is for weak people. I, I just kind of think we're all weak, man. I think all of us uh, are weak and, and we are in need to be dependent on something. And it could be booze and golf. It could be church and worship. But I guess at the end of the day, I mean, if you've got to choose a dependency, Jim, I mean, do you think it's, you think it's better to be the booze or somebody trying to advance their life? This is the last time I got invited back to that club. No, but it wasn't at all. We had a stimulating, beautiful, wonderful conversation about it. He goes, man, I never thought about, like, I guess we're all kind of dependent, aren't we? And I go, kind of. I mean, even if we're financially uh, independent, we'll never have to work again like yourself. I mean, but you still are dependent. You're still checking out and checking into something. Why not God? So that was an interesting conversation, needless to say. Uh, a couple weeks later, I'm sitting outside at one of my buddy's house who's... Uh, does really well and, and enjoys the finer things of life. And we sat outside and 
and a couple of us were out there and towards the night kind of goes on. You ever notice how the night goes on? The more truth comes out, anybody? So the night goes on and he goes, hey, can I ask you a question? I'm like, here we go, you know. What's it gonna be? What do we have for him, Johnny? Here it comes. And he goes, do you really, I follow you on Instagram. I see your studies. Do you really believe the stuff you're peddling on that stage? Or is it like you just kind of hyping all these people up and, you know, is it a gig for you? I mean, this is like, this is, a, this is my normal life, by the way. This is like, I'm just trying to have a nice Friday night. I'm just trying to enjoy a nice round of golf. And this is the kind of stuff I got to deal with. And I, I go, well, what do you mean? He goes, well, do you really believe, I, I see the stuff you say, like, man, God's got this plan for you and, 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 and he, God can turn anything around. You guys are just getting started. It's like, you're like this little tiny Tony Robbins up there. Like, what's your deal? But he said something to me that really, it really shook me. And I want to talk about it today. And I want to have permission. And you're kind of stuck unless you leave. So I'm taking permission. But I want to have permission to speak into your life and be your pastor this morning, if I can, around something that I'm really passionate about. You know, the Bible talks about spiritual gifts. And we all have different spiritual gifts. Uh, some of us are, are, are just have the natural gift of, of giving and generosity, some service. Mine's evangelism. I just love to talk about God. I think he's awesome. I do. I, he, I think he's been good to me. I think, man, whenever, whenever like, the bad days come, man, I know who I'm talking to. I just love talking about him. And it, it usually gets a little rough and tumble, but I'm an eight on the Instagram, so I love conflict. Anybody? I'm like, let's party. And so, but, but I want to talk to you today about sharing your faith. I want, to, I want to have permission just to talk to you about that because I want you to know this. I love the people of our community. Man, I love them. And I know this, that, that both those stories I told you in the last 45 days are people that live within 10 miles of this church and they have no idea this church exists except I talk about it. They don't see it on the freeway and think, man, maybe I should pull in there. They don't even know it exists. And the only way they find out these things is, is if I talk about it. And I want to talk to you today because I love the people of this community. I love your neighbors. I don't even know your neighbors. I don't know if I love your neighbors. You can tell me if I love your neighbors or not. But I, love, I want them to go to heaven. And when their marriage gets tough and their kids get tough, and their finances get tough, I want them to be able to go to my dad. I want to be able to talk to Jesus. I want to be able to talk to God. I want him to be loved. And I, I want that for your neighbors. I want that for your friends. But man, we've got to say that this is a place that, 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 that takes it seriously. And I think when DJ and, and Pastor Jared were like, you should preach on outreach. I'm like, oh boy. Because I'm going to get after it. We're going to talk about it. Because my friend said to me this, he goes, do you believe? It's kind of jarring to hear that. Like, do you actually believe the stuff? I think he said you're peddling. It's, like, it's not a very nice sentence. But when somebody asks you if you believe something, you kind of have to sit there and go, do you believe it? Listen, I know we all come to church and we all do this stuff, but do you believe it? I want to talk to you today about a moment in Scripture in which there was the same tension of do you believe the things you say you're believing? Because Jesus had this moment in the story, of, uh, the story of Lazarus. If you have your Bibles, you can go to the, uh, John chapter 11. How are we doing? Do you believe? Do you believe? In all the things you say, you believe. John chapter 11. So what's going on? Jesus is out doing the things Jesus does. He's healing people. He's doing his deal. And the word comes back that his buddy Lazarus, who his brother, uh, his sisters were Mary and Martha. Mary was the one that broke, if you remember, broke the, the perfume and washed Jesus' feet and kind of became his inner circle. And so Jesus is out doing the things Jesus does. And word gets to Jesus that Lazarus is sick. Uh, he's asleep, maybe in like some sort of coma. I don't know if he got a, what kind of disease or sickness he got, but he's sick. And they say, Jesus, you got to come back to save Lazarus. Jesus says, Lazarus is going to be fine. Don't worry about Lazarus. Well, Jesus keeps doing his thing. And by the time he gets back to the area, uh, Lazarus is dead. So things aren't looking good. All right, so Mary and Martha come to Jesus. And I want to I wanna introduce spiritual tension. Everybody say spiritual tension. If you don't have spiritual tension, you're not trusting God for anything. If you don't have spiritual tension, you're not trusting God for anything. And so spiritual tension is good. How many know it's scary to trust God? Is it just me? I mean, ever, anybody else ever go like, God, I really want to trust this. Like, I really want to pray about this. I really want to believe you for this. But what if God doesn't come through? What do you do with that? Anybody? I'll tell you this, if you trust in God for something big and God doesn't come through, 
I want you to email Pastor Jared. <laughs> and if you email me, I'll forward it to Pastor Jared. But have you ever been there, you know, where you're like, man, I'm scared to trust because what do I do if it doesn't happen? Well, there's this moment where, where, where Martha had, had, had summons Jesus. Jesus, by the time he get there, verse 21, time, let's walk through this spiritual tension together. Verse 21, Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had only been here sooner, if you'd only been here, my brother wouldn't have died. How's that for a welcoming? Jesus is out there doing the stuff Jesus does. He walks into town and in comes Martha. Martha's a dangerous woman. You ever met a Martha? She walks right up to Jesus and she goes, hey, Jesus. He's like, hey, what's up, Martha? Had only you been here, had only you shown up, had only you done what you said you were going to do, Lazarus wouldn't be dead. Anybody had any of those moments that you go, had only God showed up sooner? You ever had those feelings where you're like, God, had only you been there, had only you shown up, uh, this, this, had only you shown up, this deal would have went through. This relationship would have been better. Uh, my, my opportunity would have been better. God, had only you shown up. And it's, this is where tension with God initiates. God, had only you been present in this moment, so much could have changed. And we start in this relationship with God that says, if only... And I can tell you this right now, if you start in your relationship with God as if there's a past tense with God, you're not trusting him. God, the moment passed. There's nothing we can do. Had only you shown up. But, the, but see, Martha is like a, she's like a ninja or a savant in guilt. You ever met anybody like this? And she said, had only you shown up. But then she watched what she does. But I know that even now God will give you what you asked for. Don't you love this? God, you, Jesus, you showed up too late, but I do know something, Jesus. God will give you anything you asked for, so maybe you asked. And she's in this tension with Jesus where she's demonstrating that she would rather try to negotiate or guilt God into something than trust him. Does this sound like anybody's faith life? Does this sound like anybody, you ever done this? God, if you do this, I'll never do this. God, if you do this, I'll always do this. Anybody? And God's like, you, okay, you well, I can't believe I got to negotiate with this peon like you. You ever felt like this? And she's like, God, had only you been here, this would have never even happened. But since you weren't here, let's just remember that you can ask the big guy upstairs for anything you want. These are the actions of somebody that if you looked at them said, do you believe? These are the actions of somebody that does not believe. This is the ap actions of somebody who's trying to manipulate God, bend God, uh, hope that some weird thing's gonna happen because you don't just look and go, God, you got it. And the problem is, here's, here's why I wanna bring this up. Uh, if we do not believe in God, we will never transform our lives or the lives of other people. So she says, if only you would have showed up, none of this would have happened. And then she says, as Jesus, you can have whatever you ask for. And Jesus said to her, I love this. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Leave me alone. For the love of God, leave me alone. Your brother will rise again. To which Martha answered, I'm not done yet. She says, oh, I know he'll rise again in the resurrection of the last day. The resurrection of the last day, they would understand that when God returns, everybody who's dead will rise from the dead. So Martha goes, oh, I know he's going to rise again after this life. Can you, under, can you see what Jesus is going through here right now? He's like, man, I've been out busy. I told you he's going to be fine. Did I say he was going to be fine? Did I, did I say Lazarus was going to be fine? Martha's grinding me over here in the corner because she doesn't trust me. Do you believe? Do you believe? This is the spiritual tension that we all live in. And the reason why that we don't see lives change is because if we're honest, belief is really, really hard. We don't live a life that, that, that models I believe. We don't wear the jersey. I love seeing the, the San Diego jersey right here. LT, is that LT jersey? Hell yeah. Did you say hell yeah? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, right uh, Okay. Woo! So he said, I don't know if you saw, I could hear, but we'll, we'll, oh yeah, I think is what you said. All right, um, 
Man, I know who you're for. There was a guy in the first service had a Vikings jersey. I didn't have to ask which team he was for or who he was repping. When he walked in the room, it was go Vikings. When he walked in the room, it's go Chargers. When he walked in, that's how it was. The challenge is very few of us live a life that's wearing the jersey that goes, man, I'm for Jesus. We don't know. It's funny, this uh, friend of ours, we were at dinner with them at their home. Um, I don't know, maybe it was like six weeks ago. And, and uh, the, the wife says to me, she goes, you know, one of the things I really have a problem with at our church, I'm like, golly, I can't go to a club. I can't hang out on Friday night. I can't hang out here. What's your problem with the church? I just feel like every Sunday that we should give an altar call. I think every Sunday we should give somebody a chance to say yes to Jesus. I don't disagree with that. Seems reasonable. To which I said back to her, I, I think we should do that too. The problem is, you know what the problem is? She's like, what's the problem? I said, the problem is there's never anybody sitting next to you that needs to hear it. You've never brought somebody far from God to church. Who's going to come down? It sounds like a brilliant idea. It sounds like a beautiful idea. But what's the point of letting people say yes to Jesus if every single one of us come here and sit by ourselves and don't bring people who are far from God here? So I didn't get invited back to that house again either. <laughs> What's the point of doing what we're doing if we're not repping the jersey? What's the point of doing what we're doing if we're not walking into rooms and going, man, God transformed my life. He can transform yours. What's the point of doing this if we don't believe? And this moment with Martha, why I love this moment is that it forces us into spiritual tension where Jesus goes, hey, Martha, I'm going to take care of Lazarus. And Martha goes, it's too late, Jesus. It's too late for that deal. It's too late for that relationship. It's too late for my finances. You're too late. I, I mean, I know you could do whatever you want. And I know when this whole thing's said and done, when it's all said and done and all over, I know you're going to come through. But God, it's not right. I want to know right now are you going to come through? And then Jesus says this. He breaks the tension with a knife, and I love it. This is what he says to her. He says, um, there it is. Got to find it. Jesus said to her this. I am the resurrection of life. And this is where I want to pause for one moment. I want to simply ask you this today. Do you believe? Do you believe that Jesus is the resurrection of life? And this is what it means. And this is why it's so important. And I want to break this down in our last few minutes here. He says this, I am. Everybody say, I am. And I, you got to understand this moment. I wish we had more time. Don't you just, don't you just think this goes really fast? <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe not. He says to her, he goes, Martha, Martha, look at me. You're messing with me. You're telling me what I can and can't do. You're, you're playing manipulation God with me. You're, telling, you're, you're playing the poor thing. When it's all said and done, you're, you're doing all this thing. Listen to me, Martha. I am. That's a, dry, that's, a, that's a mic drop. He said, Martha, I am. And everybody went, oh boy. Jesus just said he's the I am. And why this is so important, in the Greek, what it meant was to exist. He goes, Martha, I am the one that exists for the moment. Whatever the moment is, I exist. And the reason why this was so jarring is because the only time you see it is when, was when God said it to Moses in Exodus 3.14 where he says this, Moses, to I am who I am. He said, tell this to the people, the I am sent you. And in the Greek, the I am means to become. And so if you look at the Greek and you look at the Hebrew, it means to become or to exist. And Jesus goes, you need to understand something. You need to understand what jersey you're repping. You need to understand what belief means. I am the God that becomes and exists for whatever the moment needs. That's who I am. That's who you say you believe in. Your marriage needs fixing, I am. Your finances need turning around, I am. A relationship needs healed, I am. You need vision for your life, I become. I become and I exist for everything that this world needs. Martha, I am. Do you believe that? Do you believe that whenever, whatever is going on in your life, there's a God in the universe that sits up in heaven and goes, I am that guy. And then he says this, I am the resurrection. 
Just so we're all clear what we're repping, what our jersey is, so we're all clear what it is. We serve a God who says, I become what the moment needs. And he says this, anything in life that needs to be resurrected, anything that's dead, a belief, a hope, a person who's far from God, your finances, whatever needs to be resurrected, whatever's dead, God says, that's when I show up. I am the one who becomes the moment to take dead things and bring them back up. Why? For the purpose of life. So that your money becomes life to others. So that your words become life to others. So that your time becomes life to others. Martha, the only reason I'm going to raise Lazarus to the de- to, from the dead is not because you're bothering me. It's because I am the one who becomes the moment that raises dead things to life. And I want you to see how he, how he finished this off. It's so cool. He gets up to the, he gets up to the grave, and, and it's, this is wild. And Martha, I, I can't wait to get to heaven and meet Martha. She's going to be a treat. But watch this. John 3, 38, Jesus once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across it. He rolled it away. But Lord said who? Martha, the sister of the dead man. By this time... There's bad odor. You shouldn't even open it. Martha. You ever have anything in your life that you go, man, that's buried so deep that if you rolled that stone away, it would stink. Anybody got something you would just rather leave buried than face the stench of the moment? And Jesus goes walking up there. He said, I'm the one that becomes whatever the moment needs. I resurrect dead things to life. Do you believe? Do you believe whatever's going on in your life, even if it's behind a stone and it stinks? And Jesus looks at Martha. And this is what he says, and I love this because this is the whole point of Jesus. Then Jesus said, did I not tell you, Martha, that if you believe, you'll see the glory of God. And men and women, this is what I want to hear. I want, I want to say to you today. Um, the whole reason that we're on this earth, I'm just going I'm I'm to just lay it right out. The whole reason we're on this earth is to grow in the image and likeness of God. That's it. And we're surrounded by amazing, beautiful human beings that are trying to figure out the answer to that question. I love to vacation. I love to shop. I'm one of those dudes that loves to shop. I love experiences. I love food. I love it all. It's just not why I'm here. I'm here to grow in the likeness and the image of God. And Jesus says this, he goes, Martha, didn't I tell you why we're doing all this? I'm not rolling this stone back to flex. I'm rolling this stone back because I take things that are dead and bring them to life. But why? For the glory of God. I love this word glory. In the Greek, it's it's the word doxa. And it means this, the unspoken manifestation of God's splendor. Martha, the reason I do everything that I do is to create unspoken moments that manifest my splendor. You ever walk to the beach and just been like, oh God. You ever had that? We're just like, wow, I'm so small. You've been hiking up into a mountain and just been like, golly, this is amazing. Do you ever experience the unspoken splendor of God? God's like, I will, I, I will become anything a moment needs to resurrect it, to speak life, as long as it becomes the unspoken manifestation of my splendor. And men and women, that is the role of our lives. God puts you on this earth to be the unspoken manifestation of God's splendor. God built this house. These walls, we know they don't mean anything more than concrete, but what's inside of it does So my friend asked me, I heard you say, God's got, I think he said, I think you said a wild, audacious plan for your life. 
I looked right at him and I said, he sure does for you, brother. He absolutely does for you. And he does for you and for you and for you and for you and for me. And not, not, not because for your glory, not for your glory, not for your splendor, but because God's going to show his glory and splendor to the world through you. I guess my question is just simply this. Do you believe? Man, I love our community. I love the men and women that, I was gonna say that drive through all these streets, but you know what's hard about this job? I drive a little crazy and every time I'm like, Josh, do not cut people off. Do not do that in this town. They know you're on stage. I'm like, I love this town. And I, I, I break for this town in a good way. I hurt for this town. I, I hear the stories of the men and women that live within 20 miles of this church, 30 miles of this church. And there's stories where they're trying to keep their marriages together. There's stories where they're trying to get out of financial struggles. There are stories where they've got all the money that they need, but they're lonely and they don't feel valuable. All these stories. And I'm like, man, God, I believe. I believe that you're the God that can, that, that can become whatever that person needs to resurrect their life so they can breathe life to the world. I believe you can change. I believe. And all I'm saying is, guys, we got to be a church. And I'm saying this very gently and very loving. <laughs> and so just hear it that way, please. We got to be the church that says, man, I can't keep coming here alone. I can't. I can't keep coming here dead. I got to resurrect. I got to believe. We have such a finite amount of time on this earth, amen? It's like this much. Do you believe that whatever is going on in your life, God can become what you need to resurrect your life and make you whole? Would you stand with me? You know, um, I suppose it'd be lost on me if one of our amazing church members said, why don't you give people a chance to say yes to Jesus? Would you bow your heads and close your eyes with me? Man, I have no idea what's going on in your life today. With every head bowed and every eyes closed, if you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, I want to give you the chance to do that today. God's word says that when we call upon his name, when we say, man, I need you, God, I can't do this by myself anymore, that God is faithful and just to meet us in that moment. So with every head bowed and every eyes closed, if you're somebody here that says, I do not yet have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, but I need him to become my God, to resurrect what's dead in my life and, and bring it to life. If that's you today, with every head bowed and every eyes closed, I just want you to repeat this prayer for me. Dear Jesus, just do it in the quietness of your heart. Dear Jesus, I need you to become my savior. I need you to resurrect this life and allow me to be a life-giving person. I believe today. With every head bowed and every eyes closed, we just slip your hand up so I can bless you in the name of Jesus if you prayed that today for the first time. God bless you, 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 you. You back there, I see you, you. Man, you back there, I saw that. That's awesome. Would you look up here with me real quick? I want you to know something. Man, I love you. I don't even know all of you, but I love you because you're here and this is our family. And I believe in our family. I believe that when people show up here, that there's a spirit in this church, there's a love in this church, there's a generosity in this church that is just fresh and new and it's different and it's not of this world. And when we begin to speak the name of Jesus, when we begin to live the name of Jesus, when we begin to go, I believe, I believe that God will use us to reveal the unspoken splendor of his majesty, amen, his glory, amen. Would you just sing with us today? Would you speak the name of Jesus? Would you be the name of Jesus? And would you decide today, I'm going to follow the teachings of Jesus.
give God glory and thanks for those who have accepted Jesus as their Lord, and as their Savior, as their Father and friend this morning. Thank you, Pastor Josh, for that encouraging word and challenging word. Uh, there's so much there in that, and we are a church that believes we don't just be hearers of the word, but we are doers of the word. And if you're looking for a next step, and man, I'm looking for some faith to respond to that message, and I need prayer. We've got pastors that are gonna be right here on your left that would love to pray with you and to walk with you into next steps in your life. And speaking of next steps, if you're new with us and you wanna get connected to our church in some way, you can head to the Go First Center right in our lobby, right outside the doors, We'd love to meet you, to get to know you. We are so thankful. And as Josh always says, aren't you glad you came to church today? We're so thankful you all came out with us. Go in the grace and the peace of Jesus. Have a wonderful rest of your Sunday. We'll see you guys next week.